from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Yes. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning into the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. I just want to say the following, um, and uh, I know that uh, we have, you're supposed to have synergy with the uh, other companies in this corporate conglomerate. And I'm probably not supposed to say what I'm about to say. But since it doesn't specifically apply to any one individual, and it could apply to people at other corporate conglomerates, I think I can get away with saying this, and I'm going to give it my best shot. Can you tell I'm back from vacation? And I'm like, I am so fired up. You just don't know how fired up I am. I mean, I recommend you listen every day this week because anything might happen. I mean, I literally could enforce my own firing. I really believe it. As a man who's been fired, let me tell you, this could be the week it happens. I'm telling you right now, this could be the week. I want to warn everybody, just so you can't say, I didn't warn you. This could be the week they finally put the axe in my back. Axes have been put in others' backs. Right. I never know. This could be my week. Anyway. Um, we work at a movie studio. I'm not allowed to say which one it is. But it's a movie studio. A big one. With a big name you would recognize. Located in Hollywood. On Melrose Avenue. I'm not going to say which one. Let's just say it's in the 5500 block. And um, as we uh, come to work at the studio, we see the writers outside picketing. The Writers Guild of America is on strike, and the writers are picketing. And um, we know what their demands are. And... I'm no company man. Let me just say this. I mean, I'm a big supporter of capitalism, and I love money. <laughs> and I think everybody loves money, including the people who aren't getting enough. <laughs> so they want more. They're picketing. And I don't think anyone's really noticed outside of our little community of Hollywood that there's a writer's strike unless you watch late night TV. Until now. Okay, here's what's happened. The networks have run out of new episodes of almost every show. So two things have happened. I think now for the first time, America is getting an idea of what this writer's strike means. How many times do you watch the news and they talk about a strike? You know, there's a garbage strike in New York. You don't even care. My God, did, did they pick up the garbage in New York? Look at that place. It's disgusting. You mean they actually pay a bunch of people to come by and pick up the garbage? When does that happen? Every time I'm in New York, I'm walking past mountains of hefty bags that have been eaten into by rats and you can smell what's inside the bags and people pee over the all over the bags and it's just absolutely disgusting but yes there are actually there's something in New York called the sanitation department and as bad as it usually is when they go on strike you can only imagine how bad it gets 
And I think this is what we're finding out now with the writer's strike. Up until now, up until the beginning of 2008, it was easy not to notice a writer's strike. And the reason it was easy, if you were an American, just your average American, especially one that doesn't depend on the entertainment industry for your income, or especially if you you don't live in the Hollywood area and your way hasn't been blocked by pickets or whatever, Um the fact is that now everyone's going to become aware, and there's there's two very specific reasons for this. One, the networks have run out of episodes of all the scripted shows. There's very few new shows on the air that aren't reality shows or game shows. I think there was a new episode of, like, Desperate Housewives last night. they got a couple of episodes left in the tank, but, I mean, the networks are scratching. They're scratching. What they've done is they, they've rerun the reruns until they finally have taken off shows like The Office and My Name is Earl. A lot of these shows now are not on. And they've replaced them with wonderful shows like The Celebrity Apprentice. You see that the other day? And by the way, they've now redefined the word celebrity again. Amorosa is now a celebrity. Why? Because she was once on a reality show, so now she qualifies as a celebrity. So they brought her back. Now, on The Celebrity Apprentice, it's very exciting. And it reminds me of the old days on The Match Game when they used to see. You ever watch The Match Game on the Game Show Network? And Johnny Olsen at the beginning of the show would say, it's time to match the stars. And then there were never any stars on The Match Game. If you were a star, you did not need to appear on The Match Game. <laughs> and it's kind of the same thing on Celebrity Apprentice. Who do they have on there? Like Mary Lou Henner? She was on Taxi back in the 70s. Was it the 70s? When was that show on? The 80s? A long time ago. Ask your grandmother about Taxi. It was on back, way back. Art, uh, do you remember Taxi? Uh, you know about Andy Kaufman being on Taxi. And you knew that from watching the movie uh, Man on the Moon. That's the only reason you know about Taxi. All right. Well, Mary Lou Henner was on that show. And I, I correct me if I'm wrong. I think that was her last job at show business. <laughs> She's one of the celebrities on The Celebrity Apprentice. Another one of the celebrities, somebody named Nellie Galan. You see that? Nellie, you know who Nellie Galan is? One of the celebrities. It, does anybody know who Nellie Galan is? Nellie Galan is a reality show producer. <laughs> So it's a reality show that has one of the celebrities, a reality show producer. Nellie Galan was the creator of the show The Swan. That was one of the great shows of all time. Nellie did not appear on The Swan, by the way. It, wouldn't being a celebrity involve somehow being in front of the camera on a channel people have watched? And I think she's worked at one of the Spanish TV networks. But again, you know, has she been on a show that's been above number 100 in the ratings? You would think that would be a qualification. And then there were other people on there I did not even wreck. Nadia Comaneci? Yes, she was in the Olympics before you were born, Art. Nadia Comaneci. The Celebrity Apprentice. One of the great shows. Just wonderful. That's what they've replaced The Office with. And some of the other shows on NBC, they put The Celebrity Apprentice on. It's good. And uh, lots and lots of episodes of shows like One Versus 100. And, I mean, two hours of Deal or No Deal. I'm not making this up. Two hours of Deal or No Deal. You kidding me, right? Holy schmagoli. I can't believe what I'm seeing. It's it's amazing. So in case in case you're, you're like watching this going, why is Deal or No Deal on for two hours? It's because there's a writer's strike. Does it require writers to, for Howie Mandel to stand there and go, okay, do you want suitcase number two or number 14? <laughs> and that's, that's what they're doing. This is, this is the big plan of the networks. Very exciting. So all your favorite shows are going off the air or they're just rerunning the reruns over and over and over. I mean, re how many times can you watch the same nine episodes of Rules of Engagement? Well, that's, that's what they're doing. It's quite amazing. 
I can't tell you what they're doing on Fox because there are so many reality shows on Fox. I'm all reality showed out. I can't take it. Cannot take it. I did watch Celebrity Apprentice because it was so, it was beyond bad. It was way beyond bad. You, do you know The Apprentice had been canceled? It had been canceled. And NBC hired a new, they, they fired this guy, Kevin Rod. They fired, you know, they never said, nobody ever gets fired in the TV business. He uh, resigned to pursue other interests. Or whatever they said. And he was replaced by this guy named Ben Silverman. And, and Ben's claim to fame is that he he goes to other countries like England and Colombia and he finds TV shows and he turns them into Ugly Betty in the office. That's, that's, that's what he did. So they replaced him with this guy, Ben Silverman. That's who's running NBC now. And Ben Silverman, one of his first acts was to call up Donald Trump and say, all right, please, please, like we, we need The Apprentice back. That's that's what's going on on TV, and this is why we're all finding other things to do. That's why people. That's why seventy two thousand people chose to watch a woman peeing on my front porch, rather than uh, watching some of the shows on TV. But uh, another way, but besides the fact they've run out of shows and they're running all these reality shows, is uh, NBC and CBS have ordered all of the late night shows back to work. Without writers, except in the case of David Letterman and Craig Ferguson, both of whose shows are produced by David Letterman and not by CBS, they've negotiated a separate deal with the Writers Guild. So those two shows have writers, but everybody was ordered back on the air. And so you've got these shows. You've got Jay Leno and you've got Conan. By the way, I've met Jay. I love him personally. Uh, but I just want to say this, you know, because we in this business, we are roasted, roasted all the time for what we do. You know, we're irresponsible and we're this and we're that and we're horrible and I'm a misogynist and the next one is a sexist and the next one is a shock jock and whatever. Uh, but, but the fact is that we are roasted regularly by critics by uh, columnists, by political cartoonists, we who do what I do for a living here. And uh, radio is always uh, made fun of. We even uh, are self-deprecating about it. It's referred to as the lowest rung in the show business ladder, what have you. But let me just say this. Anybody who doesn't appreciate what we do here, watch one of the late-night TV shows without writers. This show does not have writers. In actuality, if you live in L.A., this show is on for five hours every day, and I generally do four new hours every day. 240 minutes of new programming every day, approximately 45 weeks a year. 45 weeks a year, 20 hours a week of new product. 900 hours of original programming every year. 900 without a writer. Not these fake rants that Dennis Miller reads off a teleprompter or some of the other people who rant and rave and they're reading somebody else's writing on a cue card. We do this live every day. And by the way, some of the writers who are out there on the picket line, uh, you know this all too well because how many of you have cherry-picked things off this show and included them in the plots of the network TV shows that you've gotten paid to write? Don't mean to kick you when you're down, but come on, you know it's true. It's absolutely true. So here's what I want to say, okay? Uh, generally, I just know my place in the food chain, and I don't say anything. But I tell you what, I could come on and do any one of these shows right now. Not as a guest. I could come on today, not having had a regular late-night TV show, late-night talk show, daytime talk show, whatever. I could come on any one of these shows today and do it without a cue card. And I would not be spinning a wedding ring on my desk. I would not be taking questions from the audience. I would not be seeing how much time I could kill by letting the band play for an extra minute or two going in and out of every commercial like they're doing right now on these shows. What? And by the way, I'm not the only one who does this. This is not just speaking for myself. This is speaking for anybody who's good at this. And there are people who are good at this. I, 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 I talked to Danny Bonaducci, who uh, now has his own show before us here in L.A. from 2 to 3 every day. And he's one of the people who uh, I think is compelling to listen to. But here's the deal. None of us have cue cards. None of us have. Well, I think Adam Carolla has writers. 
But a generally, two writers. Are they members of the Writers Guild? I don't even know. Now, we don't have writers. And for those of you out there who think this is easy, I've heard people calling in when Danny was on the show, people calling in saying, I can't believe people pay you to talk on the radio. Well, guess what? Jay Leno makes a lot more money than we do. Conan O'Brien probably makes more money than we do, too. And when he starts hosting The Tonight Show next year, he'll definitely be making more money than we do. But you want to know something? Bottom line? These guys couldn't do my job. They couldn't. Good as they are at writing jokes, as Jay Leno is, good as they are at uh, Conan O'Brien, has been a very good writer on The Simpsons, and uh, I believe he worked on Saturday Night Live as well. It's one thing to be a, a writer for the shows and what have you, but the fact is, when you have to stand out there in front of a camera or in front of a microphone, and you have to be interesting, these guys don't hold a candle to people like us who do this. I know how hard this job is to do, and I'm amazed how little respect we get for doing it. And, and but by the way, don't take my word for it. Tune in tonight to, to, to Jay, who I personally really love. I, I, I love him, and I met him, and I think he's a wonderful guy. But he'll be the first one to tell you that he needs his writers. And if you watch that show, believe me, he does. Conan O'Brien, I've always been a fan of Conan. But my God, is he scratching. And I'm not even going to bring up Jimmy Kimmel. You watch any one of these shows and see if any of these guys could do this job. And I don't mean doing this job by making a wisecrack and then playing three records. I mean sitting here for hours every day and holding an audience of millions. How many of these guys could do it without writers, without cue cards, without scripts? They can't. They can't. And I am particularly enjoying watching these shows. You want to know something? I schedule time every day. I have been TiVoing these shows. I'm watching. They're one train wreck after another. And I, I know the writers who are on strike right now are enjoying watching these shows. I know it. This is what they wanted, and they're getting it. But I am enjoying it for a different reason, not because I, um, I, I, I'm I a member of the Writers Guild or I, I think they should get two cents more per DVD or whatever, <laughs> whatever it's all about. It has nothing to do with that. I love it because we always take a back seat to TV shows. And the movie studios, including the one we're sitting at right now, which I can't even say the name on the air. I'm forbidden to say it. The movie studios, the TV networks, they always diss us. When actors have movies to promote, where do they go? Where do they go? They go to TV. They don't come here. They go to television. And, 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 and they, they say all kinds of negative things about radio. I, more than one potential guest for this show has said, oh, oh. We don't do radio. Or the publicist will say, oh, no, she doesn't do radio. Guess what? It takes talent to do radio. And, in fact, it takes more talent than it takes to be on television, bottom line. Oh, yes, you might have a better tailor to be on TV or a better hairstylist. That's entirely true. But as far as the content of what you're saying, if you don't believe me, watch any one of these late-night shows tonight and see what's going on. Seriously, Leno, Conan, Mr. Roboto, Carson Daly, Jimmy Kimmel, you tune in and see what these people are doing. You know what Jimmy Kimmel is doing? Jimmy Kimmel is, is doing a lot. <laughs> He, he like, is, is on his show, appearing quote-unquote live, introducing clips of old bits that they ran on the show. Because they don't have any, he can't think of things to say for 60 minutes a night. Can't do it. Can't do it. These guys have never done us any favors. I haven't been on any of these shows, and I'm not attacking them because we haven't been on any of these shows. They, they all tape them around the air. I don't know whether or not they would even want us on the shows. I don't care. All I'm saying is you, we generally have to take a back seat to everybody who does television. And now the laugh is on them. The worm has turned. 
because we do compelling stuff every day. And by the way, I'm going to be on four hours live every single day for the next several months. While your favorite TV shows are in reruns or they're spinning their wedding rings on the desk, we're going to be here doing live shows that are compelling to listen to. And, and you're going to see who has the most talent now. You're going to find out. It's not just us. It's everybody who does what we do. So those of you who go speeding home to watch television at night and you're getting home and it's the same old crap or these talk shows with no writers that are on. on by, John Stewart and Stephen Colbert are coming back tonight. Are you kidding me? What are they going to do without writers? Let's see how funny they really are. <laughs> I'm serious. Let's see how funny they really are. They've got great writers. Fantastic. What are they going to do for half an hour apiece with nobody writing anything? In fact, they are members of the Writers Guild. They are forbidden to write for their own shows. Are they going to sit there and whistle Dixie for 30 minutes? Are they going to do card tricks? What are they going to do? But you're going to find out how hard this job is, boys. We know how hard this job is. Because we're here doing it without a net every single day. Every day. And we have huge audiences, and I, I, for one, am tired of the lack of respect we get. Here in Hollywood, we, we just don't get any respect. We make millions of dollars for advertisers. We have millions of dollars in advertising on these shows with blue-chip advertisers. And we come on the air every day, every day, kicking ass, balls of fire coming out of the back of the van, baby, every goddamn day. And yet uh, they sneer at us. The networks sneer at us, the movie studios sneer at us, the publicists sneer at us. Yeah. But who's on the air now with fresh, compelling material? <laughs> not those shows. No. So I, I felt I had to speak out not only on behalf of, of, of myself and our staff. None of them are members of the Writers Guild of America. We don't need writers here. Why don't we need writers here? Not because writers aren't talented. I think these guys make the other guys who make $100 million a year look fantastic. I mean, I really, I don't say that to be facetious. I really mean it. And all these people talk about Jon Stewart like he's the second coming. What would he be without writers? Well, I guess now we find him. But more importantly, this show never had writers. So even though I'm a member of two unions, I'm not... I'm not crossing a picket line per se. I'm not working on a, a show that, uh, that employs writers. You know, uh, you know, doing this show is cool under the union rules. It is. And I, I want to say that uh, I think the writers are enormously talented. And uh, frankly, you know, if, if you guys want to hold out for as much as you, you want to hold out for, that's okay with me. And, uh, you know, it's not going to hurt me. And uh, ultimately, it may help you because people are going to see how valuable you are. But uh, the other thing about the writer's strike, you guys are making it uh, real easy for me to show everybody how talented radio personalities are. How hard we work. How hard this job is to. When I saw Conan O'Brien spinning a wedding ring on television, how many millions of dollars a year do they pay this guy? And, and he needs writers to do that show. I mean, lots of writers. He's got comedy bits, one after another after another, and they're very funny, and his writers are very talented. And he's uh, good at performing their material. But Conan O'Brien couldn't do this job. Couldn't do it. I thought maybe Jay could do it, but that lately, as much as uh, I enjoy watching Jay do his monologue and headlines and some of his bits, i got to tell you, when he went to the audience and said, ask me any question, come on. I, I, you know, because I've met Jay, I was dying inside for him. I mean, the guy was suffering. He'll put the best face on it, but I got to tell you something. That was bad. That was bad. Fill in time. I could do an hour sleeping. I, I could snore an hour of radio program without a writer. Can you imagine Dennis Miller without a writer? Oh, my God. He's hardly on TV anymore anyway, but that's beside the point. All right. We'll take your telephone calls coming up next. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Stop. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like you. Definitely don't like you. It's the Tom Likas Show. I'm a 
lid is off on the Tom Likas show. I've decided I'll give a rat's ass. You know, I used to be the bad boy. I'm one of the better behaved employees of this company. Show up to work every day. Every day. When I have throat problems, as you know, I come in anyway. My dog has a hangnail. I come in. If I'm having a panic attack, I show up anyway. That's right. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, <laughs> it's a whole new it's a whole new era for the Tom Likas show, starting with 2008. It's a whole new era. If everybody else can behave this badly, then uh, I'm stepping up to the plate here. I'm getting right into the rhythm of the thing. That's right. When's the next? Uh, there's a there's a big uh, pay per view boxing match coming up soon, isn't there? I think I'm calling in sick on the Friday before, and then I'm going to be in the crowd there at the fight. That's what I'm going to do. And if anybody sees it and calls me out on it, I'm just going to say, uh, "Give me the Corolla treatment." That's right. One eight hundred five eight hundred Thomas. I told you the lid is off. I told you. I'm feeling my oats. Let us say hello here <laughs> to, to James on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How's it going, Tom? I'm doing okay. What a big man throwing from a uh, throwing stones from a from a guarded uh, castle. <laughs> you have nothing to worry about, right? Oh, I'm not worried about anything. There you go. Yeah, guess what? There's one show that gets big, big ratings on the station here in L.A., and that's this one. Yeah. Big, so, big would, ratings. Yeah, I mean, huge. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't worry at all. I would I would throw everything out there. And the only people who have anything to worry about are the people who don't get any ratings. Exactly. Whoever they are. Yeah. I th yeah, what a letdown. You were just talking crap about uh, talk shows. I thought you were going to start hammering management or, like, uh, your coworkers or something. Well, keep in mind, uh, the uh, radio station and the network that employ me, uh, they they are, like, co-owned by a company that owns a TV network. Oh, I see. And a movie studio and uh, some cable networks. So, you know, essentially I'm biting the hand that feeds me, I guess, <laughs> indirectly. No, although I'll tell you that, I'll tell you what, this uh, station is probably, uh, this uh, show is probably generating more cash flow than most of the reruns of TV shows right now. Right, right. Um, I was good. I, I agree with you that uh, there, there, was, there was in the diminishment of quality because they're writers. But I, I would think that, like, if they were used to it, like as many years as you had time to develop your show, you know, like I'm, I would think in the beginning years you weren't what you are now, obviously, right? Well, let me tell you something, Johnny Carson who now, now has been dead a couple of years, and his career ended about 16 years ago. Uh, Johnny Carson worked first in radio and and then came to television. Bob Barker, and I know Bob, and I'm a big fan of him as a broadcaster. I got, I got to spend time with him. Uh, Bob was in radio for years. Uh, and, of course, David Letterman started in radio in Indianapolis. Oh, I did not know that. So uh, I do think that this is the place that you, uh, you, 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 if you do it here, you can do it anywhere. But there's a lot of people who, who have not successfully done it here who go directly to television. And, uh, you know, suddenly they're put in front of a teleprompter. And, I, you know, I just keep thinking of that god-awful Carson Daly show, which is unwatchable. Oh, yeah, that, uh, that show sucks. On what? Here's a guy. Yeah, oh, he was on the Sure, he was on the radio. He was at 106.7 Caro Q. It's Carson <laughs> Daly. Uh, yeah, that that took a lot of talent. But did Carson ever have to sit there for 34 minutes out of every hour and fill that time? No. No, he didn't. And on television, I mean, if you want to see a laugh, right. That was trash. 1.35 a.m. on NBC. You got to TiVo it. Don't stay up. Uh, you got to see Carson Daly. <laughs> <laughs> trying to do a show without writers, it's just, it's unbelievably bad. Yeah, It's unbelievably bad. Wasn't that show on rotating hosts for a bit, or was it always just Carson Daly? I don't, no, 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 it was, it, it was Carson Daly, and before that it was, uh, who was it before Carson Daly doing that show? It wasn't rotating hosts, there was a host, there was always a host on at one thirty. At one time it was Greg Kinnear, mm -hmm. and another time it was Bob Costas. And at another time, it was, uh, who else did that show? 
I forget. There were yeah, various people. There were various people on at one thirty after. Originally, it was Letterman on at twelve thirty, and then there was Tom Snyder at one time, and there was all these different people on late at night. Mm. So, you, what would you do if you had your own talk show? Would it be the same radio thing, or like how how would that transfer over? Well, well, first of all, I would throw out the cue cards. Right. I would throw them out because I don't need them. Okay. And there are people who need them. And, and uh, again, I think writers fulfill a very useful function. And uh, some of my favorite TV shows are written by brilliant people. Uh, the, uh, the Office is just just a great show, and I love it. Conan, Conan has great writers, and Conan, when, when he's got writers, is spectacular. Right. How sad was it that... Uh... After the what was it three hour lo- or the hour long episode, they just canceled that. Cancel what? Strike. That was whack. Which one? The, the office. office yeah. Well, they had, the office hasn't been canceled. Well, it, not not canceled, but they had it. You know, they have to take it off the air show. because they, there were only like nine or ten new shows this season, and I think they'd already rerun all of them. So, but what do you do? Right. Yeah, I got so used to the hour long episodes, and all of a sudden you got nothing. I was like, oh. No, you got Nelly Galan and Amarosa. It's very exciting. It's a Celebrity Apprentice. I guess that's what uh, they're reduced to. <laughs> and no knock to Gene Simmons. He's been in here, you know, but come on, Gene. That's not a celebrity. Have you bumped in any celebrities on that show, Gene? Come on. <laughs> no. Gene, we're going to have stars on this show. You come to New York, we're going to have stars. <laughs> it's going to be big. Right. All right, Tom, thanks for your time. Can you take me out uh, or take uh, Helen Keller out? Can you blow up Helen Keller? Uh, can I blow up Helen Keller? Of course I can. Are you ready? Tom Likes. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. You can have an opinion. I just don't want to know what it is. Why is that? Because I just want you to put your left leg at the 12 and your right leg at the 3. Oh, 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 that is so irritating to hear you say that. It's the Tom Likes Show. From the home of the writer's strike, Hollywood, California, the Tom Likes Show is 1-800-5800-TOM. Back from vacation, out of control. Out of control. Dennis on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Tom, thanks for taking my call. You are more than welcome. Hey, uh, one thing that um, that baffles me about someone—I don't know about the—I don't know about all these other late night guys—but someone like Conan O'Brien uh, needing, claiming, you know, he needs a writer. Didn't he used to be a writer? Well, he was a writer, but you see, the talent of writing is different from the talent of speaking into the microphone or into a camera or talking to an audience. Here's why. Uh, because a writer has all day to think of one punchline. Okay. okay. Uh, uh, think, right? I mean, I see, like- see, what I'm going to say to you in 15 seconds, I have no idea what it is right now. Okay. I see what you're saying. That's got, that's got spontaneity in it as well. Right. Okay. I mean, well, a, a writer can think, sit at home all day to write one joke. But you, but you'd also think maybe him being a former writer that this guy would know what is good for him. You know, right? I'm sure all these writers pr- present him with their ideas, and he's got to go over them and say, "No, this isn't right. This will work. This won't work." But but the thing is, he's not allowed to write anything down according to the union rules. Oh, okay. See, I was not aware of that. Right? Fact. He literally can't write. Oh my God. Oh my God. That well, means he has to do it, uh, you know, he has to ride bareback. He, <laughs> he has to go free balling, baby. He has to do it the way we do it. And yeah, that's man, what I'm walking. saying. If you want to see how good we are at this, watch how bad they are at this. Oh, I'm telling you, hey, dude, you put any one of those late night guys, I don't care which one it is, on, uh, behind a mic like you are, they're, they're going to crash and burn, man. Crash and burn. Well, they, uh, I, they not have I am now watching them. more late night TV. While I was away, I was TiVoing the late night shows. I just, uh-huh. I can't believe my eyes. I, I am now riveted. Uh, and, and, and I'm watching to see what kind of train wreck comes out. Reality TV is just going to take off now. I mean, what is more interesting than seeing Carson Daly without a writer with, with 60 minutes to fill on television? Is it 60 or 30? It seems like 60. I don't know. I, I don't know. 30. I don't stay up that late to watch. Uh, no, 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 don't stay up. Just te- TiVo it or something. But I'm telling you. 
Well, I this, say one thing. This um, is must see TV. <laughs> my 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 personal viewing of TV is not affected by this writer strike because uh, I usually, aside from a couple of TV shows, I usually stick to you know my satellite channels, Discovery, History, you know stuff like that. You know that that holds my interest. There's a, there's very few shows that I really want to sit down and watch. You know. That, so my viewing isn't really affected so by So you don't watch porn or anything? Nah, I got four kids. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only way you're going to get sex, by hey, watching man. it on TV. Hey, man, but I will tell you what. That Celebrity Apprentice was pretty damn good. It you, was pretty good. Oh, you liked that, did you? Yeah, it wasn't bad, man. It wasn't bad. The only one that gets my nerves is that Omarosa, like you said, all of a sudden she's an instant celebrity. My God. Yes, and, but the thing is, too. Nellie Galan, she's a celebrity, too. Who exactly is she again? Well, among her credits on her resume, she created that great uh, reality show for Fox called The Swan. You oh, know the, the you know the, the, the okay. plastic surgery <laughs> show? Yeah, yeah, where they uh, the ugly duckling type thing. Right, and they they gave them all plastic surgery. Oh God! Right? Well, yeah, like I said, the one that I missed, <laughs> the one that I didn't That's, watch. Well, that, a lot of people didn't watch it. You see the ratings for that show? Ooh, baby! Oh man, no thanks. But it was it was pretty good. It was and. and and you hey, bag on him all you want. Gene Simmons cracked me up on that show. He was just well. We crazy. like Gene. Gene's been here, you know. I, in fact, I'm oh, not really not as I said on the air. I'm not knocking Gene, but I gotta wonder what they they what they told him to get him to come on and appear with this bunch of nobodies. It's exposure. Gene Simmons. He he loves exposure, man. That's why he's. Uh, that's why he's who he is. I I, even though he loves expo, he's got plenty of exposure. I gotta believe somebody gave him a big sell job and told you come to New York. We have big, big stars on here. Big Gene, come on, big star, big. I'm, sh- I'm sure of it. I'm sure there's no doubt about that. Man. Oh baby, thank you for the call, Dennis. One eight hundred five eight hundred. Tom is our telephone number. This is Veronica on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hi Tom, I'm a huge fan. Thank you. Um, and I thought you made really great points at the beginning of the show about um, the writer's strike and all that stuff, but I did want to comment on Jimmy Kimmel. Yeah. And although you said you don't even want to comment on him, but uh, you probably know that he started out in radio and was doing that for a really long time. Yeah, but doing what? He was on K-Rock for, what, like yeah, five years or something? Did he do the morning show on K-Rock? Yes, I think so. It no, was, uh, he did not do the morning show on K Rock. Kevin and Bean have been doing the morning show on K Rock since I think nineteen ninety one or ninety two, something like that. You know, I'm not sure um, the actual name of the show, but I, you know, I heard no. him speak about it no. uh, with Adam Carolla. No, Jimmy, Jimmy did a sports report on someone else's oh, show. I think, I think you're right. I'm sorry. Right. Um, but uh, you know, he fill in for Adam when he was having his kids. And I listened to that show a lot, and I thought he was amazing. I thought he was probably even better than Adam. Well, I, you know, if that translated to his TV show, that would be fantastic. Really? I love but, the show. Uh, have you seen it without writers? You know, I did watch uh, the first one without writers, and it did suffer, I have to say. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I'm not saying that these shows aren't good with writers. I'm saying without writers, we see how weak some of these people really are. Well, that is true, and I think a lot of them, I don't even like them, even with writers, like Conan or Jay Leno, even though you think he's good. I, I think the humor is very, very um, too much for, like, the families watching together. I don't like that kind of humor. But I think Jimmy Kimmel is very, very witty, very good. With uh, writers. No, I mean, when I was listening to him on the radio. He's, I I'm, not, I'm not, not, again. I don't, what he did on the radio, I don't know, I don't care. I, I watch television to see these shows. And no, reg- but you were making the point that if they were to be uh, on doing, the radio... Doing a morning time. show for two days in Los Angeles is not the same as doing one for five years or ten years or twenty years. Touche. <laughs> it's just not the same. You're right, you're right. And like I said, I'm a huge fan of yours, and I can't talk on the radio for... Five minutes and be interesting. And he did a morning show that has writers, I might add. That's true. That's true. Do you All know right, that show has it. writers? It has writers. Well, I mean, but they have writers for to come up with uh, bits, but there's four hours to fill on top of well, that. I have four hours to fill, too. That's true. So what does that tell you? I'll leave that as a rhetorical question. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.